Does drinking hinder my spiritual growth? Now, I don't know about you, but many of us have grown up with certain kinds of religions or certain kind of dogmas and frameworks of how to understand the world. And as I think as we get older, we continue to enlighten ourselves, empower ourselves, and define our own spirituality in ways that meet us, ways that meet our dreams and goals and truths. And so to me, spirituality is really a concept of furthering my self-development, furthering my own personal growth, furthering my own understanding of the universe, making sense of it, making and seeing the grace and the magic that comes with living on this planet. You know, we are on a rock that spins around in a solar system powered by a sun, a star, and we, for all we know, are the only humans that are living in this known universe, right? We don't know, I guess, but it's a miracle. It's a miracle that we've evolved to be to where we are. It's a miracle that not only are we alive on this planet, but that we have been given this gift of being intellectual beings, of being growth-oriented beings, of being able to really manifest our own lives and create things and have beautiful, beautiful, emotional, spiritual and intellectual growth on our time here on this planet. And so I love furthering this in my life. I love looking into things like synchronicities and the law of attraction and the power of visualization and really feeling connected with something bigger than me. You could call it God, you could call it the universe, you could call it source, you could call it anything that fits your beliefs and your system of thought. But feeling connected to something bigger feeling like there's a bigger meaning and a bigger purpose in this planet, feeling the luck and the grace that we get to experience every day, experiencing the miracle of being alive on this planet is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And today I want to talk about, does alcohol help my spiritual growth? Does it hinder it? Why did these things matter? You know, to me, I did grow up in a somewhat Christian Catholic household And while I would never want to disparage any kind of religious or belief, you know, part of me didn't find, um, I found like there was some mistakes of the past from the, you know, institutions that men created that didn't sit well with me. And it didn't feel like there was a true sense of equality and justice. And so I kind of strayed away. And as I became a drinker and I started drinking on all of my 20s, (laughs) I really didn't feel a spiritual bone in my body. I didn't feel connected to anything bigger than me. I didn't pray. I didn't visualize. I didn't um, ever really recognize the miracle of being in this beautiful, beautiful planet, you know, being able to heighten my own growth. And so when I did take a break from alcohol when I was 30 years old, I not only had an awakening with my health and my happiness and my potential but also in what I felt deeply connected to about my purpose here on this planet and how it's connected to a bigger meaning, a bigger truth about our own power, our own potential as creators here on this planet, you know, of just pure like energy, pure spirit, pure source, pure universe that we're all connected to in some way or fashion. I love these analogies that, you know, like our our existence here is kind of like a wave. You know, we're part of this huge ocean. We're all connected. And yet when we come here on this planet, we manifest as the single wave. And as soon as it crashes, it goes back down and it goes back into this vast ocean. It's all connected. We've all always been connected. And these things used to just not really dawn on me as a drinker. I didn't really explore these deeper truths. In fact, something I used to explore when I was younger and then I kind of dropped it when I was older. I fell so much into things like the law of attraction, which shares that, you know, your vibe, your emotions, and your thoughts really do create your reality. And when you're constantly thinking negative thoughts and feeling negative emotions, you're only repeating and bringing more of those experiences into your life. And I had a hard look at how alcohol fits into that equation. You know, alcohol neurochemically changes the brain chemistry of your brain. It lowers your dopamine and GABA and serotonin. And it heightens some negative chemicals like cortisol, adrenaline, dynorphin, which make you literally feel anxious, sad, and low. And so if drinking alcohol regularly was constantly, by no fault of my own, making me feel more low, more depressed, more ashamed, more anxious, I wasn't really attracting great things into my life. 
I was always in a low state, always seeing kind of the worst and stuff. I was never able to increase my vibe, my vibration, my energy, my emotions to even attract the things I wanted. I was also so single-mindedly focused on things like, will I drink on Friday? Will I not drink? How much is going to happen? You know, like all the crazy rules, all the mental gymnastics. My brain had so much chatter going on in it that I really couldn't focus on bigger questions about like the universe and how I want to be connected with a deeper meaning and purpose here and what kind of miracles and grace I want to invite into my life. You know, with the law of attraction and things like visualization, these are things that have grown immensely, immensely for me and I know a lot of my clients as they embark on their alcohol-free lifestyles. And whatever spirituality means to you, maybe it's a heightened connection with you know, you're Jesus Christ or you're Allah or whatever it is, you know, please replace the words as they are fitting. But having that deeper connection and whatever means you do it through, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through contemplation, whether it's through reading, whether it's through visualization, whether it's through journaling, I think is important for humans because there's deeper questions for us. And I think it's part of our destiny to search for those deep, deep answers to really understand who we are, what we really need, what we really want, what the purpose of our lives are. And, you know, we can go on forever in our routines and in our habits and just chasing the next bill and paying the bill and just managing the household and just doing life. And in so many ways, you know, like COVID this year stopped that it really disrupted all of our routines and our habits. You know, the wake up, go to work, wake up, go to work. Most of us, you know, started working from home. And that was a huge disrupt in the sense of like, of this, the hamster wheel that you could really spin on forever if you wanted to, if you never got off of it. And I hope for you that even this year, or even as you've been coming to transform or reevaluate the role of alcohol in your life, it's an option and ability for you to step off that hamster wheel and find out the things that really matter to you and find the things that are the biggest priority and what your true meaning and purpose is on this planet. You know, answering that question might be a long, lifelong endeavor, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth asking ourselves, does alcohol help me be the person I want to be? Does alcohol help me grow? Does it help me grow emotionally? Does it help me grow intellectually? Does it help me grow spiritually? Does it heighten my belief? Does it heighten my faith in a magnanimous world where I am a creator that I can manifest my dreams or does it lower it? Does it detract? Does it hinder my spiritual growth? Do I even have time for spiritual growth topics when I'm drinking? Do I have time to read about things that light up my soul, that make me feel connected to something bigger than me? Do I have time to read about things like law of, manif- law of attraction or manifestation or visualization or spirit guides, or angels, or whatever it looks like to you, or reading the Bible, you know, whatever it is. Do I even have time, mental capacity, to focus on questions of why I'm here on this planet? You know, finding that answer and finding some kind of philosophy that bodes well with you, that really sinks deep to your intuitive gut level that, yes, there is a purpose for my life here. There is a purpose for humanity. There is a reason why I'm here. And it's not to play small, and it's not to drink every weekend, and it's not to unrealize your potential, and it's not to unrealize your dreams and goals. You know, when you find the depth of the one truth that we all have this one life here, and that we were given these expansive potentials, we are so much more capable than we think we are. We are so much more capable than we think we are. We don't even know. Our beliefs, our preconceived notions and assumptions keep us so stuck in these little cages of what we think we can do in our lives. And yet the people who have escaped that and are showing us that it's so much more as possible are really role models and inspirers. You know, before 1950, there used to be this belief. It was almost like a rule that no human could run faster than a four minute mile. It was like everyone just believed that no one's ever done it before so nobody believed it was even humanly possible it was just like a rule it was like the fact of gravity right until in 1952 roger banister with the power of visualization the power of believing that there is something bigger than him and that these rules are just human constructs actually ran under a four minute mile 
And once he did that, he basically shocked the world to debunk that belief, to not believe it anymore, to understand that, wow, it is possible. And because he did it first, within that year, like a handful more people did it, and then hundreds of people have now done it, and now I think thousands of people have done it, have run these miles under four minutes. And before him, it just was literally believed impossible. We absorb all these constructs and beliefs and conditioning from the society around us and especially from childhood of what we're capable of and it keeps us so stuck in these limited roles and these limiting you know purposes and these limiting ideas that it's just about getting by it's about just getting a good job it's just about reputation it's just about whatever it is we're on these hamster wheels and I think when you can really stop and really truly reflect what is my deeper meaning to be here on this planet? What is the deeper purpose of my life? What do I want it to be? What are my deepest values? What are my biggest dreams? How am I connected to something bigger than me? Am I a lot more powerful than I think I am? Am I like connected with just source energy? Am I a beautiful, infinite potential being? And when you ask yourself those questions, you know, so much, so much can develop from there. So much of your own growth, so much of your own potential, so much more of your belief and faith that yes, it's possible. And then you do it and you start showing other people how it's possible. I don't know if you heard of this term synchronicities, but when I stopped drinking alcohol, all of a sudden I was getting that you could say all these little voices that were telling me I'd be better without it. All these little voices. Every Monday morning I heard the little voice, you know, you'd be better without it. And I never really listened for a long, long time. I just kind of quieted that voice. And it was that little voice that really got me over the edge. It was that little voice that I finally decided to listen to. And when I did listen to that little voice and I crossed the bridge, I literally was rewarded with miracles on the other side. Miracles, just like signs, literally signs from the universe. Maybe you believe and see that too. Maybe you get signs. Maybe you get those little voices. Maybe you see lucky totems all around you. Maybe you see a bird that you love or an animal that you love or a flower that you love. A little gift, a little note from the universe saying like, this is so much bigger than you think it is. This is your greater purpose and potential. You're on the right path. Keep going. And so a synchronicity is usually what's called like a coincidence where something seemingly random happens and it just is so eerie and so coincidental to not be able to dismiss it. You're just like, wow, this is a sign from the universe. This is like, maybe you hear the same title of a book, like repeated five times from all these different teachers. So that's like a little synchronicity showing you that you should read this book. You know, there are signs everywhere in our intuitive spirit and also our connection with something deeper within us is trying to show us those signs all the time. And when I was a drinker, I just didn't see them. I didn't have the mental capacity to even see them. It was like I was walking in an invisible tunnel and there was this whole beautiful world around me and yet all I could see was in this dark tunnel. I just couldn't see it. It's like I had those flaps on that horses wear. I couldn't see the beautiful signs. I couldn't see the synchronicities. I couldn't see how my thoughts create things and how my emotions govern really my life. It was just this tunnel and I wasn't growing myself. I was doing the same thing every weekend. I was hanging out in my comfort zone all the time. And I was really scared to listen to that inner voice, that inner voice of true intuition, of true spirit. That intuition is like your deepest connection with source, God, the universe, you know, however you define it, the divine. And so it's never a question of right or wrong. It's not black or white. But when alcohol comes into this equation, you have to ask yourself, does it help me grow spiritually? Does it help me grow my God-given potentials to manifest what I was meant to do here on this planet, to serve, to manifest my dreams, to have a beautiful holistic life that other people will be inspired by, to help other people, to serve other people, to help the person behind me, to help people go overcome the same challenges I had? Or does it keep us stunted? 
Does it stunt us from any kind of emotional growth? Does it stunt us from spiritual growth? Because our mind just can't be bothered. Especially with emotional growth, you know, like alcohol numbs your emotions. So every time you reach for alcohol, you're numbing the emotions that are meant to be processed. Your emotions are your greatest gifts because they're teachers. Your emotions are teachers that are trying to teach you what needs to be overcome, what limiting belief needs to be healed, what blocks need to be healed, what needs to be processed. They're there to help you make shifts in your life. If you're not happy or if you're disappointed or if you're frustrated about something, that emotion is there to help show you how you can make changes. And if you always drink over it, if you just numb it, if you just never allow yourself to process your emotions, you're never learning from them and you're never making changes, right? And then it's just this repetitive cycle where you feel negative emotions because alcohol produces negative emotions and you drink over those negative emotions and it's just never ending. You're never learning, you're never growing. You know, there's this theory. I don't know how much truth there is to it or how much truth I give it, but there is some truth in it. It's just not so black and white, I think. But there's this theory that whenever we start drinking, that's where we're emotionally stunted because we never truly learned how to process all the things that came afterwards as drinkers because we're just drinking over it. Even if you're not even drinking like all the time or anything, but it's this theory really that we're kind of emotionally stunted at the age that we started drinking until obviously we stopped drinking. And it's interesting, right? It is interesting because if we're always numbing the emotions, if we're never working through the challenges, if we're just shoving it all down, you know, it does stunt us. It does stunt our emotional growth. Brene Brown is, you know, someone I really admire and she's alcohol free. And she writes a lot about leaning into our emotions, even our negative ones, even things like shame, even, you know, things like embarrassment. She writes a lot about leaning into the vulnerability of feeling your feelings. And when you feel a negative feeling and you reach for a drink, like she literally says in her book, Daring Greatly, that you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to build resilience in that moment, to learn how to process your emotion and to learn how to literally heal from it and learn how to like make a shift in your life from that message that you got. Your emotions are your greatest teachers. And so there's this obvious connection that alcohol really does stunt emotional growth. And spiritual growth, you know, when you're that negative cycle where you're in that tunnel, that invisible tunnel that you can only see forward barely anything and there's this beautiful world around you, you know, it feels true too because for me, the miracles, the synchronicities, the deeper faith, the deeper belief, all of it came when I took a break from alcohol and went alcohol free. All of it manifested in my life. All of these like connections I was making, all these like deeper insights, all these deeper truths I was really finding. If you're questioning your relationship with alcohol, if you're trying to take a break, if you're doing dry January, if you're a few months alcohol free, if you are a few years alcohol free, Walking this path is how you literally get to know who you are. Walking this path is how you are able to be the most authentic version of you. Walking this path allows you to know what you really need, how you need to be taken care of, and what you truly want and desire on this planet. Drinking covers all of that information up. Drinking covers up all the signs, all the little voices from your intuition, all the little miracles from the universe. It numbs them, right? And being able to walk through both the hard, the challenging, the problems, and the amazing, fully alive, fully experiencing all of it. Now that is a miracle. It's a miracle to be fully alive on this planet. It's a miracle. There's so much grace. Grace is everywhere you look. And I forget all the time. I forget about this all the time. You know, I fall asleep at the wheel all the time. And so I think that's why it's important to have some kind of spiritual practice where you remind yourself of this magnitude. You remind yourself of the profundity of your existence on this planet. You remind yourself why it's a miracle that you're here and that you are not going to squander this one lifetime that you have because you are full of so much potential. Maybe that's prayer for you. Maybe that's journaling. Maybe that's visualization. Maybe that's meditation. Maybe that's like being in nature. Maybe that's some kind of exercise you do. Maybe that's like looking up at the full moon. There was a beautiful full moon yesterday. Maybe there's some kind of routine or ritual that you incorporate into your life that reminds you, hey, wake up from your worries. Wake up from all the constant stress every day. Wake up from the habitual 
motions of living as a human and remember who you really are. Remember who you really are. Remember the magnitude of your purpose on the planet. Remember the grace and the miracle of being here. And I don't know how much continuing, you know, back and forth with drinking allows that to develop because it kind of robs it from you. And so 2021 is right around the corner. And if being deeply connected to your spiritual growth, to something bigger than you, to the deeper meaning of being alive on this planet is somehow something that's going to be important to you and something you want to remind yourself more often, then you are on the right path. You're on the right path by exploring alcohol-free living. I have had my own kind of epiphanies about it. I've heard countless other people who've had epiphanies about it. But if you really want to grow emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, in your own resilience, in your own power, in your own potential, keep asking yourself these questions. Who are you authentically without a drink? Who are you authentically? What is your meaning and purpose on this planet? And how can you access your deepest potential? What does that mean to you? You know, this is what we're here for. It's not to live in these routines. It's not to pay the bills. It's not to live in a hamster wheel. You're meant to be awake to your life. So I hope that you find practices to bring in with you in 2021 to remind yourself of that fact. And that you keep reminding yourself that trying to be alcohol-free, taking breaks... Going months, going years is how you are heightening your spiritual growth. It's how you are heightening your connection with your deepest potential. So I'm wishing you the happiest 2021 Happy New Year. There's tons of alcohol-free drinks out there. I love so many. Get a fun alcohol-free drink for your New Year's Eve. Have fun with it. Celebrate in a way where you know there's not going to be any headache in the morning, no shame in the morning. I mean, New Year's days were always the worst. Come on. Celebrate the fact that you get to live life differently with your eyes fully awake to it, your life fully alive to you. And remember the meaning of that. Remember how freaking big deal that is because it's pretty miracle. It's miracle. All right. 